Why? Why is the larger angle? Because from 90 to 130 degrees is an angular distance of 40 degrees compared to only 30 degrees of angle X. Angles and degrees then are pretty important. Not only do they divide circles into equal parts, but they establish position on those circles. But what is really important is the concept that if we use the center of the Earth as a starting point, we can divide the Earth just as we did a circle. We can create angles to divide the surface of the Earth into degrees of latitude and longitude, beginning with our circular line, the equator. That's really what Mr. Latitude is now trying to tell us, that his job begins where he's pointing, at the equator. The equator is his largest and most important line of latitude because it becomes a starting place for measuring latitude north and south of that circular line. In other words, the equator becomes zero degrees latitude. We measure latitude from the equator, which is zero degrees, north to the North Pole and south to the South Pole. This is really like measuring or dividing up one half of a circle. Here, let me remove part of the Earth and I think you'll see what I mean. From the equator north to the North Pole is one-fourth of a circle or 90 degrees. Likewise, from the equator south to the South Pole, again, one-fourth of a circle, 90 degrees. From pole to pole, 180 degrees. All latitude then is so many degrees north or south of the equator, but never more than 90 degrees north or 90 degrees south. On most maps and globes, not every degree of latitude is shown. There would simply be too many lines for us to see anything on the globe or map itself. For our purposes, let's mark them in at 20 degree intervals. Remember that circular lines of latitude are formed as an angular distance from the center of the Earth with the equator as one side of the angle, and in this case, another side formed at 20 degrees north of the equator, 40 degrees north, 60 degrees north, 80, 90, we're at the North Pole. We number latitude in the same way, south to the South Pole. Don't forget to put in the capital S or N standing for south or north latitude. These east-west lines of latitude completely circle our Earth. And notice that each one is parallel to each other and to the equator. For example, this line is parallel to this line or to this line. This line is parallel to the equator or to the pole. All these lines are said to be parallel to each other. Now let's see if you've been listening. Which of these circular lines is not parallel to the other? D is correct. If you travel from point A to point B, what direction would you be going? East is the answer we want. No wonder we sometimes call these parallels that circle our Earth east-west line. But the lines may not always appear circular. If we're looking directly down at the equator, the parallels appear as straight east-west line. As we rotate the globe slowly, the parallels appear as curved line. Finally, looking down on the pole itself, what's happened? These east-west parallels now appear as complete circles, one inside the other. Notice also that the closer you get to the pole, the smaller the circle, and the higher the degree of latitude. In fact, Mr. Latitude thought that I might forget to mention that people often refer to his high, middle, and low latitude. Low latitudes are just that, low in the number of degrees, from zero degrees up to 30 degrees north or south of the equator. The middle latitudes, from 30 degrees up to 60 degrees. The high latitudes, from 60 degrees up to the pole itself at 90 degrees. Remember that there are high, middle, and low latitudes in both hemispheres. Generally, the low latitudes which border the equator are characterized as a hot or warm region because of receiving the direct rays of the sun for most of the year, while the high latitudes are considered cold regions, receiving only slanted rays of the sun for the same 12-month period. The middle latitudes will experience part of each. At 12 o'clock noon, direct rays for much of the summer. 
changing to slanted rays for much of the winter. Hence the middle latitudes become regions of seasonal change, experiencing fall, winter, spring, and summer. Where do we live? Where is the United States of America in relationship to the low, middle, and high latitude? Well, actually, we're in all three, although most of our country is right here. 48 of our 50 states lie almost completely within the middle latitudes. Our state of Hawaii is in the northern part of the low latitudes, while most of Alaska is here in the high latitudes. Hence, our country experiences a great many different climates, from the humid continental to the polar climate of northern Alaska. But even if we were to live along the very same line of latitude, it would not necessarily mean that we would experience the same living conditions. For along any of these east-west parallels, elevation of land, wind, temperatures can all vary, as well as the amount of rainfall or snowfall received, the length of the growing season, the crops that can be grown, or even the animals that can be raised. Here at sea level, at the equator, bananas will be growing at zero degrees latitude. 200 miles away on the same equatorial line, little or nothing will grow on the slopes of Mount Kayambe, 18,994 feet elevation. It is simply too high. This friend of ours has done his job. Now it's up to you. Can you call to mind his full name, as well as his largest and most important line of latitude? Can you divide a circle in half or into four equal parts? What is meant by an angle? or the word parallel. Can you discover what the many climates are like in the middle latitudes? And what about this fellow? We still haven't talked much about him. Without him, Mr. Latitude is meaningless. He needs our attention. Next. from the 